it once occurred to a king that if he knew the, when was the best time to act and who were the most important people to listen to and what was the most important thing to do, he would never fail. But alas, he didn't know the answers to those questions, so he put it out to his kingdom. He offered a grand reward for anyone who could tell him when is the most important time to act. Who are the most important people, the right ones, not the wrong ones, to listen to? And what is the most important thing to do? Well, he got advice from lots of people. For the first question, when was the first when was the most important time? Uh, you must make a schedule. You must schedule everything in so you know exactly when you should uh, do things. No, no, that, that's not true. That's not true at all. You, you must have a, a plan in mind for when to act. So you must have counselors and advisors to give you times and tell you exactly when you should be doing things. No, said a third. That's ridiculous. Sometimes you have to make a decision right on the spot. You don't have time to plan for it. So you must know ahead of time when something is going to happen. For that, you need magicians, for they can see the future and let you know when it is you are going to supposed, you're supposed to act. As to the second question, who are the most important people? The physicians are the most important people because they're the ones that keep you healthy. No, then it was the religious people that said, no, it's the priests. They're the ones that keep you spiritually sound. <coughs> no, said the administrators, it's the counselors you have around you. They are the most important people because they direct you as to how you should think. Again, nothing satisfied him. The third question is, what's the most important thing to do? Well, uh, science is the most important thing to do. Through, through science we get discovery. Through discovery we learn new things. No, the most important thing to do is to pray. Of course, that was the religious people. Through prayer, our, our thoughts are answered. No, said the military. The most important thing to do is to have a strong army and act. That's why your generals are the most important. But the king was not satisfied with any of these answers. So he decided he was going to head off to see the hermit that lived in the forest. For he had heard that the hermit was a very wise old man. But the hermit only dealt with simple folk, not kings. So he took off all his raiments and he put on the clothing of simple folk. He rode with his knights to the edge of the forest where he got off his horse, left his horse and his knights behind, and he walked on up until he came to that hermit. Now the hermit was bent over on the ground. He was digging some furrows to plant some seeds in his garden. He was old and frail. And with every dig he made, he breathed very heavily. The king greeted him. And he acknowledged the king's greeting. The king said, I have three questions. I've heard you are wise. I wish to have the answer for. One, when is the most important time? One that is not to be missed so that I regret later on that I missed it. Who are the most important people? The ones that I should listen to before all else. And what is the most important thing to do? So I know that that is what I should do first. The old man didn't answer him, but continued to dig and turn the soil. The king saw that he was fatigued and said, You are tired. Why don't you rest for a while? I will dig for you. And the, dig, the king began to dig. And he dig, dug, and finished that furrow, and he dug another furrow, and then stopped. And there was no answer yet to his questions. In fact, the only thing the old man said was, uh, why don't you take a rest now, and I will, I will take over for you. That's okay, said the king. And he continued to work, and dig, hours, after hour, he dug until the sun began to go down below the tops of the trees. 
The king stopped. He put his spade in the ground and said, Old man, I came here to ask you for the answers to some questions. If you have no answers for me, then tell me so, and I will be on my way. The old man looked up. He said, Look, there's a man coming here. Let's see what he wants. And the king looked, and there coming towards him was a thin man with a beard. His hand was over his stomach, and you could see blood coming through the fingers where he was clutching his stomach. The man made it just about to where the king was when he fell down in a faint, moaning slowly. Well, the king bent over. He, he took the man's shirt up and could see a large wound on the man's stomach. He, he, he grabbed his handkerchief. He grabbed the towel from the hermit. He soaked it in water. He pressed it on the wound to try to staunch the blood. But the blood continued to flow. So again and again, he took the bandage off. He, he wetted it. He put it back on. Until finally, the blood stopped flowing. The weakened man sat up and said, May I have a drink of water? The king fetched him some water to have. Well, at this point, the sun was now below the tree line. It was starting to get cold. So with the hermit's help, the king carried this wounded man to the hermit's hut and laid him down on the bed. The king himself was exhausted from all the walking and working, and he too fell asleep right on the threshold. Well, after a while, the king woke up. He was confused. He, he didn't understand where he was until he looked over at the bed and saw the wounded man looking at him. The wounded man, seeing that the king was up, said, Forgive me. Forgive you? What do I have to forgive you for? I do not even know you. You may not know me, but I know you. You are the king, and you are my sworn enemy. You killed my brother and took my property. I saw you walk up to the hermit alone, and I meant to seek vengeance upon you and waited for your return. But when you didn't return by the end of the day, I chose to bring my vengeance to you. Unfortunately, your knights saw me first. And they did know who I was. And they immediately fell upon me and attacked me. And I barely got away with my life. And I would have died had I not been cared for by you. I came up here to kill you, yet you saved my life. I ask your forgiveness, and I promise I will be your slave, as will my sons from here on in. But the king was touched. He was rather pleased that it was so easy to make peace with his enemy. And he forgave him and promised that he would give him back his property and even send his physician and his servants to come and help him. Having done that, the king decided it was time to find the hermit again. And so he walked back until he found the hermit who was down by his garden planting the seeds in the rose they had found. Wise old man, said the king, this is your last chance to give me the answers to my questions. The old man stopped. He looked up and said, but you already have the answers to your questions. Have the answers to my questions? Yes. Yesterday, when you took pity on me, and you helped me, the fact that you stayed was the correct time to do that. For had you not stayed, you would have met your enemy on the way back and no doubt would have been wounded or killed. So I was the most important person to be with. And the most important thing to do was to help me with my garden. And when that man came up here, the time you spent caring for him was the correct time. Had you not, he would have died, and you would have regretted never making peace with your enemy. 
And the most important person was the wounded man himself. As for the most important thing to do, it was the care that you gave him to make him well. So you see, you have the answers to your questions. The most important time is now. For now is the only time that we have dominion over. The most important person is that whom with you are with. For you never know if that will be the last person you will be dealing with. And the most important thing to do is to help those that you are with. For it is that reason alone that we are here in this life. The three questions by Leo Tolstoy.